Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another episode of Office Hours. And so this is the segment where I'll be taking your questions live from our System Builder Academy, as well as our YouTube channel. Questions around how you use Asana, how you improve processes, and how you work through the tools that we use every single day. Um, I just wanna take a second because it's been a while since I've done this. The last time I did this was July the 11th. So it's been just over a month now. And I thought I would just update you all on just what's kind of been happening behind the scenes. As many of you know, I run a consultancy. I've got a team behind me. We work with companies just like yours to help them improve how they do use Asana and how to improve their processes. But there's been some life stuff happening as of late. And I thought I'll just update everyone here. You'll notice I have a bit of a different backdrop. There have been some different videos on here where I've been at a kitchen table or on a couch um, and just been in some different environments over the past two and a half, almost three months now. At the end of May of 2023, my home in Nova Scotia was involved in a fire. And the main structure is still standing, um, but many of the outbuildings and garages and things around the house that make it function um, on top of smoke damage, um, those things were all burned to the ground. And so we haven't been living in our house since the end of May. And interestingly enough, it was my birthday weekend that this happened. And so we haven't been back home. So um, I, I recently uh, found an office space where I can get back to full scale video production here. But um, if the videos haven't been coming out in the normal frequency that you've become used to here on this channel, that would be the reason why. It's just been a lot trying to manage the rebuild of our home so we can get back in because we're missing we're missing home. We're missing the summer. Our kids are missing it. Um, we're missing being home. And then the business has been growing. Thankfully, uh, the business has been moving, growing. We've been connecting with people from YouTube, from LinkedIn and all various spaces, helping them improve how to use Asana. So one, I've been busy. Uh, I've been focusing on some growth stuff and really just buckling down in the business and focusing on the team. And then just life stuff has been happening. It's been keeping me from really focusing on the video stuff that I know you all love. And um, just a thank you to the people that are, have stuck around, who are watching this video now, who have joined since um, and maybe don't haven't been here for a long time. It's just been great to see people still coming in, subscribing, asking great questions. And so I want to be able to get back to answering those questions. And so if this is your first time on the channel, my name is Marquis. I am a business process consultant and I'm a sauna expert. And I, again, run a consultancy where we work with companies just like yours to help them scale how they use a sauna. And so for today, for office hours, the way that we're going to we're gonna do this is I'm going to throw up three questions today. We're going to go through them. I'm going to build live as we go through. You're going to you know follow along. And if you have a question, send it my way. Comment on this video. Comment on one of my hundreds of other videos. Um, and I'll do my best to get to a regular cadence for these office hours, as well as the Asana how-to videos that you've all come to love. So let's dive into our questions for today. So the first one that we've got here, let's start with this guy, is how do you plan and record and edit your content here? I'd love to hear about your process. Absolutely. Let's start with that one. It's it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward and scaled back. Um, don't complicate this one. But as you can see, we've got this video production project. Uh, my team's in there that supports me um, in, in creating these videos as well. And we have a, a backlog section. So typically, an idea will start as a blog, right? We have our content pillars that we pull from. Ideas come from um, our blogs. And then from the blogs, I'll typically create uh, either a talking head video where I'm just talking about the content of that blog, or it's uh, an Asana how-to video. So we always start with one of these templates. I've got a how-to template, which is you know, similar to this one where I have a sauna up on the screen and then I'm going through the demo. I use Ecamm Live to do these, these video demos. Um, it's a great tool. As of late, I've been using Loom because I haven't been in my studio. I haven't had access to my, my, my equipment, my lights, my cameras, this mic. And so I've recently um, started doing this again. But anyway, um, talking head videos. So it all, it all starts there, goes into the backlog. And then it goes into video planning. So this is where I'm, I'm working through scenarios. I'm, I'm thinking about what the video will look like a little bit. And then it moves to in production. So I'll, I'll go behind the scenes here so you can see what the workflow looks like. Again, it's pretty straightforward. Um, nothing really happens in the backlog. It just kind of sits there. We go to video planning. Um, and this is where, again, I'll think about it. I could create some subtasks here 
um, if I really wanted to, to, you know, start thinking through this a little bit, but I don't do that currently. And then we go to in production. So this is the stage that we're in right now. Like I'm recording this video after I'm done, I'm going to name it. I'm going to upload it to the drive. And then my video editor is going to take it from there. And then um, I'm going to move it to ready to edit. And then at that point, uh, we, we have some things that happen. So um, we create a couple of subtasks for my team to create the video thumbnails, to create the video title description. And so I already have an idea of what the title is, but they're creating that. Um, the keywords and then social posts are all prepared here. Um, we're sending the assignee to my video editor and then it's due typically within three days so that we can then move to, you know, the approvals. So once it's ready to be approved, my marketing manager comes in and they have to review the video for, you know, continuity, um, grammar, make sure that everything's on points and it matches up with the content of the title. And they're just reviewing the thumbnail, the images to make sure that everything is as it should be. And then we publish the video. So um, depending on what it is, if it's a ISWT, that's in systems we trust. That's my podcast. Um, that those typically go out Tuesdays at 1030 Eastern. If it's an Asana how to, on a regular schedule uh, where I'm not displaced, uh, we would get this up by Wednesday at 8.30 and then my talking head videos go out Fridays um, at 1.30 in the afternoon and then we're creating additional tasks. And so I'll take this, I'll publish it to our System Builder Academy space under use cases so our members there can get um, kind of a first look on what we're working on behind the scenes. And that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. There's lots of other automation stuff I could throw in there, but really no need and as you can see we've got three videos in the in production so i've just recorded some talking head videos this morning um, i did a how-to on the common mistakes around how people are using asana and then right after this video i'm going to do um, a video on the new advanced formulas inside of asana as well so look out for that video so great question hope that helps thank you uh lisa for that question let's go to the next one um, this one was good. Asana sucks at doing reports. All right. Strong opinions. I garlic. Um, for example, there's no way to pull actual time spent on tasks, um, for employees in a team or project for the past month. Just in general, reporting is quite basic though. I will agree. Reporting isn't where I think it could be. Um, does it suck? I don't think it sucks. You just have to really know how to pull this together. So let me, go to an example and again with office hours i don't prepare anything ahead of time i just jump in and we just do it live together so i'm just going to go to a project that i have here um i usually use these for demos i'm going to update some of these dates here maybe there'll be a day that i do this live and we just like go to youtube and and do it all um there but let's go to today and then i'll these are all subtasks no they're not Let's update these to today as well, maybe next week, and I'll just spread some of these out. So I'm going to use these as an, as an example. So we got some stuff here. Um, maybe this one is back last week or a couple weeks ago, and then this one's up at the first of the month. And so we've already got some estimated time here. I'm going to add in um, two hours there. Let me put five hours there, and then I'll add in some actual time here. So. Um, same thing, five hours, and I'll put this last week. Um, that's fine. And then this one, same thing. Let's pick a random date. Oh, where did it go? Pick a random date, like so. And then this one right here. Don't have, I'm not going to do it all. Just kind of give you an idea. So as long as we're, we're populating the data, right, Asana is you know, runs on, on having the proper data. And so we want to give it that information. So right now I've got these dates all within August, got estimated time, then some actual time as well. So now what I want to do is you want it to track the tasks um, and the actual time by assignee. So we can do this at the dashboard level, like within the project, or we can go and do this at the universal reporting level, which is the cross project um, reporting. So in this case, I'm going to go to dashboard and add a chart. And then I'm going to, I'll make this a number. 
um, so that we can see what those actual hours look like. And then instead of the value for task counts, I'm gonna go time entry, actual time, and we've got a sum there, great. So now we wanna see the tasks by assignee. So then we're just gonna add a filter for assignee. Um, let's go and create that. Let's just make sure these are actually assigned to me because uh, let's do, make sure this one is assigned to me. There we go, let's go back to our dashboard. Um, there we go. So we've got filter by assignee, and then I'm going to, you know, maybe add in that person. So if we just wanted to see, you know, my time, there's the 10 hours right there. And then you want to go one step further. And if we go to date, we can see time entered date. So if I want to do within the last two weeks, within the last two months, we can have all that information there and see how it does change because, um, I was updating that information um, live. So that's how you would do that. Now, the one thing that I will say, and this is where reporting maybe isn't as great as it could be. Um, sorry, just make sure you rename this. So total actual time by assignee is what the title could be up there. Yeah. So the one thing that I don't love about this is as you can see, you can't click on this. So if I go into this, sorry, it pulls up a, a list of the tasks that fall, you know, within that chart. So the only you know, downside to Asana reporting currently is that I can't click on these 10 hours to see what those tasks are, right? So maybe that's what your comment was referring to. Maybe you have gotten this far, but it's not that we can't see time. It's just that we can't see though, those individual tasks. I'm sure there's coming a time where we can see that, but Asana is really great at receiving you know, feedback on how their tools are. So submit a ticket, submit that feedback. I'm sure they'd love to hear from you. So if you want to go to the help section, um, you can submit feedback um, to the product team there as well. So great question. Um, I hope that helped. Uh, let's go to our third question. Humphrey Incon, Inc. On, don't know how you pronounce that. Um, if one of your custom fields is text, is there a way to report on that? Example, I have a custom field to track how many kilowatts my solar company installs on each job. Okay, so you're using a text field, you wanna report on it. Um, yeah, maybe you figured this out by now. Let's go back to our project and I will do the same thing. So rather than a text field, I would just use a number field. So if we go to customize, uh, we can add this custom field. I would select the number option. We can go um, kilowatts, I don't know, per job, whatever you want to call it. Um, you probably don't need decimals there, or maybe you do. Let's just add those in. And so then for these tasks, I would just, you know, go in and I know nothing about you know, energy. So <laughs> this is probably completely off, but let's say, you know, each job or each task, you know, is five, you know, kilowatts. And so as you can see, it's, it's some, it gives us a sum of the tasks that we've assigned that number to. And then similarly, I'm going to go back to my dashboard. I'm just going to do the same thing again. So we're going to go and we're going to go number like so, and then rather than task count or time entry, we're gonna go by custom field and we can pull up our kilowatt per hour. And now we can see the sum, we can see it by assignee. And actually what we might be better is to use a donut because then we can pull in the people that we want to you know, kind of track this by. And we wanna include those folks. And then maybe we want to have a date. So, you know, we can assign it within the next two weeks or, you know, within the last two weeks, maybe that makes sense. Um, so we can track all of our, our jobs. And then, you know, there's really an endless amount of things that you can then customize. So um, we can do by section, right? So if we want to do the sections that this is in, so I think we were in the to-do section. Let me just see. Yeah, we're in the to-do section. So if that was, instead of to-do, it said the job name um, or the phase of the job. And so you can know how many kilowatts you delivered in that phase. Um, or if you just want to do it for the entire project, then you would just select all the dates or just remove that filter altogether um, and then create that. And so that's what that would look like. 
hope that helps. But if um, I missed something or there was um, another use case, then please let me know. And while we're here, I mentioned off the top our System Builder Academy. And so head over to systembuilderacademy.com to join. There are people like me and you, ops-minded people that want to learn more about productivity, want to learn more about Asana. There are questions happening. We just had an event um, that we named Asanathon. So if you missed that, the replay is there. But there's so much happening inside of this community. Go there, ask your questions. We're pulling them out. We're creating videos like this. But thanks for watching. And as always, we will see you in another video. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.